Hey guys, uh, I hadn't planned on making a video, but I've just, I've come to a point where I've hit a wall in looking for churches, and I've been saved eight years, and sorry I'm dressed all in black. Anyway, not that it matters, but I'm wearing a shirt, a sweater, with black sweater with brown pants, with little snowflakes, anyways. Um, I know that no one cares about that, but still, I just feel like I needed to say that. Anyway, neither here nor there. My point is, Jesus saved me eight years ago from witchcraft and I've gone back into the churches to try to find a good church with with mixed results I have found some good churches um, a couple one was a pastor that um, ended up retiring because his church went bankrupt and he's he is my true pastor um, he knew about everything that I that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to warn about. Um, and I talked about this in a previous YouTube channel. John Ankerberg, who is an, um, a Baptist pastor, he's a great one to uh, follow. <clears throat> he has a ministry. Um, he warns about the New Age, you know, yoga, channeling, Tai Chi, martial arts, all this, all that stuff. Um, and my pastor knew about it, that. Uh, Anyway, and then I met another pastor at a good church that was Holy Spirit. He was a Holy Spirit filled uh, man of God. Um, and I warned some people there and he wanted me to warn. It was, it was great. But um, after you warn um, small groups, it can get a bit awkward. And so the Lord called me out of that church and I'm sort of bummed about it because that was one of the churches that I, you know, I felt okay and I knew the Holy Spirit was there but there's there's reasons why the Lord asks you to do things and you got to be obedient so okay but I'm looking my point in all this is I'm looking for a church I hadn't planned on making a video at all uh, well about this I mean and I had stopped making videos for a while but I've been looking for a church and here's my topic I know that this is made fun of that this is sort of uh, ridiculed or maybe I don't know but I would say that there's a reason why people brush this off and make fun of it because I myself kind of laughed at my mom when she was talking about this a couple times, about Mason symbols. I thought that she was being, you know, a Twitter conspiracy theorist or whatever, you know. I was not loving hearing about it, okay? So I get the, the initial uh, knee-jerk inclination to completely, like, dismiss this or or just kind of write it off like I get it because I really I don't think we should call conspiracy what the world calls conspiracy and I don't remember the Bible verse but that's what the Bible does says does say um, so we shouldn't be going around you know like looking at everybody and like thinking that every hand symbol they make is Masonic you know um, I'm totally against that and sometimes in public speaking, people are taught to make certain symbols, like like this one happens a lot, right? Um, they'll do some version of this or this. But I, when you see a pastor consistently doing this and uh, this and um, over and over again, I'm sorry, that's not an accident. And so um, I've been to two churches now in a row. Uh, one was a Baptist church and one was just a non-denominational church the Baptist church the preacher was not doing that or, sorry the pastor was not doing that but the worship pastor and the worship team were they were consi I mean consistently doing this sorry this one not this this is I love you they were doing this and they were doing uh, this over and over again like to the point where you're like what and then so my mom and I were going there we left that church I I, I had had enough me who, who was kind of on the fence about this whole Mason symbol thing. I was like, is this, you know, just paranoia? Is this real? I was like, no, I've had enough. I've had enough. So that's what, that's how the Lord kind of woke me up to this. And the, the whole Mason problem. We have a problem. We have a Mason and Masonic infiltration in the churches. You know what I mean? But, but people are going to deny this. I have a, I just, I can't, I, you know, like I said, I've been saved from the occult, essentially, for eight years, and I didn't even want to look at this. Of course, I wasn't really, like, you know, Wicca and the occult, I would say, yes, they're the, they're the same thing, but Wicca is, like, is sometimes, like, a, the, it depends on what kind of witchcraft that you've been deceived by, but for me, it was, like, a fantasy world kind of witchcraft. I mean, I didn't know anything about the occult or Masons. The only thing I knew was from my, my friends in college. Um... I'm going to be quite frank, my pot smoking friends in college, you know, 
they all talked about the Masons. And other than that, I didn't know much about it other than it was something to do with the eye, right? The all seeing eye, the Illuminati and stuff like that. I just thought it was just a conspiracy theory from pot smoke and friends in college. Okay. I'm not condoning pot. That's not biblical. That's a whole nother video. Anyway, I'm just saying that that's all I remember of it. Um, sorry, my hair looks a little crazy today. I had a hat on hat hair. Um, is Goodwill even open? I was going to head over to Goodwill. Um, I am going to find a home church is basically, oh, are they not open? Dang. Sorry I said dang, you guys. Maybe they are. Is that a bad word, dang? Maybe I shouldn't say it. Anyway, I'm not trying to be some weirdo legalist and I've got my own problems. I am not perfect. Obviously, I just said that word in a video. But anyway, I'm, I'm kind of done trying to be not that I was ever holier than thou, but my point is, is that I think it's easy to become self-righteous and holier than thou when you feel like you get saved and you go into the church and you feel like, you know what I mean? Like you can't rely on the church leaders to be, um, leading you. You know what I mean? Okay. So I'm just, I'm just amazed at this. Um, I don't know what to do. So I think for me, everybody has their line um, in the sand or whatever that, you know, they're, they're la the last nail in the coffin. And then they're like, I I've got to go to another, I've got to find something else. So for me, I am going to try to find a home church. So if anybody has any ideas for home churches or how to find that, or like a website that can, you know, like, uh, direct you or something, that'd be awesome. I'm just so tired guys. I mean, here's the, the thing is when I got saved, I remember getting on these, um, former new ager, um, former new ager saved by Jesus, um, um, online groups and stuff. And everybody was saying, you have to go to church. You have to be under a good pastor. And I was like, yes, you're, you're right. I need that. And the truth is, is I, I don't do well when I don't go to church every week. Like I feel, I feel, I feel it. I, I don't feel good, you know? Um, <clears throat> And so I have been trying for eight years to find a good church. Well, yeah, we have the first year I went to, to a celebrate recovery church, which was, um, where, for where I was at at the time, that was perfect for, for right now. That's not, um, where I'd like to be. A celebrate recovery church is great. If you're recently saved from addiction or new age or something like that, it's actually really good for a while. Cause, um, for a lot of reasons, but as you mature, it's, it's not, I wouldn't recommend it as you mature other than if you want it like going to a weekly group. Yes. But I just mean like, I think you need maybe, maybe more. That's just my personal experience. I've, I've I needed more than just kind of talking about things I was struggling with. It was like the Lord wanted to pull me out of that. And I was stuck in there. Just keep talking about it and talking about it. But I'm not for, but for the first year or two, that was really good for me. Anyway, I'm sorry, but I'm rambling again. But what I'm saying is like, um, it's been, it's been really hard to be told that you have to be under a good teacher, um, but then you can't find one in your town. Now, I really, for my online teachers, my online pastors, I liked David Wilkerson, and um, um, I've been enjoying a little bit of uh, some Paul Washer. Uh, he's harder to watch though, but I love David Wilkerson, and I try to listen to a strong pastor. Um, but the reason I say Paul Washer, even though he is hard, he says some hard truths is that he acknowledges that we have more of social club Christianity than we talk, than we talk about. And then we want to admit. And my thought is that perhaps, you know, the Lord is trying to reform the church or perhaps the great falling away is happening or perhaps both, you know, perhaps the uh, book of Acts is happening before our eyes. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, I do believe we're in the days of Noah. That's what the Lord's put on my heart. Um, and many others. And I'm just thinking, you know, um, is this where we are supposed to be more like the book of Acts and less like, uh, you know, the Masons who have infiltrated, unfortunately, the, uh, the churches. Now, it's one thing for a Mason to infiltrate the church. And it's another for the Masons to infiltrate the, uh, Bible colleges and for the pastors to be Masons. That's a whole nother level. Um, I'm just, I'm just kind of upset guys, I guess. I'm sorry. This is a really random video and I just, you know, I, I never, um, I never thought I would admit defeat because I always encouraged people to try to find a church, keep trying, keep trying. And for eight years I have tried. Um, and I've just been seeing more and more and more of the new age, 
uh, seep into churches <clears throat> and I've been seeing the pastors not speaking out. Now, I guess there's because they're a 501c3, they have certain parameters of things they can say, but I just, I'm at the place where I was okay with that to a certain degree, as long as you go to the, the, the Bible studies, you know, you, you can get good, <clears throat> get good, um, fellowship and, um, you know, tutelage from your, from your leaders, from, from pastors and, um, things. But I found myself, I was warning the women's groups. Like I was warning the, the pastors and the pastor's wives. And that feels bad to me when I'm warning the pastors. And I have felt that way for long, so long that I, I have been upset. And with listening to Paul Washer, it's, it's reminded me that I have needed a strong pastor and I haven't had one. And I don't want to get emotional, but it, it, it it's upsetting to me because it's like, I do think you need one. And so I am I think this is me just saying officially I'm going to be looking for a home church. And it's not because I'm a horrible perfectionist or, um, you know, I, I was sort of, it was sort of insinuated once by someone that I, I, I do appreciate, but she said that, uh, you know, not to, not to expect too much and uh, don't be narcissistic about it. Like, don't think that I'm better and, and that everyone, you know, and I, I thought, oh, I don't want to be like that. You know, um, I was raised with some narcissism in my childhood from some parents. And so I, I can, I can know, I notice when I, I have some things that, that, that the Lord is sanctifying me on about like being prideful or narcissistic or stubborn. I mean, I've got so many issues, guys. Why do you think I got into witchcraft? I'm sorry, but I'm just laughing. I have to laugh, you know, a little bit. It breaks the tension. I do not know if the Goodwill is open. We've got two people sitting here. I'll go in in a second. Anyway, it's a nice day out today. It's not super cold. I'm, I didn't plan on making this video, but I'm just, I'm upset. And um, I'm hoping to uh, get somebody's feedback on what to do. Um, yeah. Anyway, have a, have a blessed day. If you have found a church that your pastor is not flashing Mason signs and he's not allowing the new age to come in. Um, oh man, that's a huge blessing, huge blessing. And he's not doing the NAR or, you know, all the Bethel stuff and the, um, it's all the same stuff. It's all the devil infiltrating. Okay. But it's got, it's got different, uh, it looks different for every different deception. You know what I mean? But if you have found that rare gem, oh man, uh, praise the Lord, because I, I have been about a month without a steady church because we had a severe cold snap. And so, uh, that was two weeks that I couldn't go to church because I have uh, cold intolerance and heat until I have, a, I have some autoimmune issues and I was having some problems. So for two weeks, uh, one of one, one of them was an ice storm and the other one was like Arctic below Arctic temperatures and my car was dead. So that was, that was two legitimate reasons. But before that I was still, I had been searching and I just, I just, I just hit a wall today. Okay. I've rambled enough, but, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel guilty like because I feel like Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So I don't want to do that. But I also have to realize the times we're in and the times we're in are very biblical and they're very serious. And the end time signs, you know what I mean? People are seeing them and it's not it's not just it's not super, super radical to talk about it. So what I'm saying is I do believe that this is part of it. Um, and David Wilkerson did speak about this. He, he spoke about it in his um and, and a lot of his sermons about the church letting in uh, the, the um, occult. So I'm seeing it. It's just, it's hard to admit that it's happening now, you know, on, on to me in my life. I live in the Bible Belt, so you would think that that wouldn't be happening. All right, 14 minutes. I'll just go ahead and cut it. Love you guys. Bye.